Have you ever given much thought to setting up your hospital room to birth in to make it a cozy and inviting space? This can be really important in setting the vibe of your birth room, but more importantly, making you feel safe and comfortable and allowing the helpful hormones of labor to lead the way as you birth your baby. Plus, it's more pleasant to birth in a more comfortable space. So today in this video, we're going to talk through some easy, simple, non-permanent things that you can do to set up your hospital room for an optimal birth experience. These are just things that I find myself doing when I step into the room and first thing I do is change the tone and get the vibe going and bring about a beautiful birth, whatever that means for you. Like and subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with a new video every Thursday. I'm Carrie Higgins. I'm a birth doula, childbirth educator, and mother of two school-aged kids. And today we're talking about setting up your hospital birth room. space is to create a space that feels safe and cozy. So in the birth course that I teach my online birth class, I go into a lot of detail about the hormones of labor, both the hormones of labor that are present in your labor and birth experience and some of the environmental things that you can change to help influence the positive hormones of labor. The environment is part of that. So we're not going to go into detail on that with this video, although I have some prior YouTube videos on the hormones of labor, so you can look back on those. In this instance, we're just going to talk about some of the simplest things that you can do to change the vibe. And the reason I was inspired to do this video is I was thinking about what do I do with every hospital birth when I show up? And these are the most basic things that you can do. So the most basic thing you can do, first off, is wear your own clothes. So you could be wearing just like us, a simple skirt or a pair of shorts or something or a dress and a top. You could be wearing like a sports bra and something simple on the bottom. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, but if it's your own clothes rather than a hospital gown, it sends a completely different message to your brain and to the people in the room with you. Your partner, your other parent, the other parent of your baby is going to see you in your own clothes rather than a hospital gown and treat you perhaps differently. Same with the medical care providers. If they're seeing you in your own clothes and if you're feeling your own clothes against your skin, it feels really different than being in a hospital gown. Another thing that you can do is keep the lights dim. So first thing I do when I walk in the hospital room is I add a bunch of battery operated candles. So you can buy like a pack of 12 little motor candles, battery operated for 20 bucks or something or less, even 10 bucks. It just depends on what you get. But you can buy a pack of those and then just go around the room, put three or four in the bathroom, put three or four next to the table you're laboring on. And then the first thing I do is I turn off the sun and then I turn off the overhead lights and it completely changes the vibe in the room. And so there being a bunch of glaring, bright, overhead fluorescent lights, that it's just a very calm and quiet space. If you're going to labor on the toilet, they call it the dilation station for a reason. The toilet's a great place to labor. Having just a few candles in there rather than turning on the overhead lights can help you stay in this cool, calm, quiet laboring mode. And this is assuming you're up and mobile during labor. If you choose to use epidural pain relief so you're confined to the bed, you can still move around in the bed with the help of your, your team, but you can't necessarily move around the room, but it's still helpful to keep those lights dim to feel the sense of, of softness and soothing, cozy, quiet, dark space. It's still going to be helpful for you regardless of if you're having an unmedicated labor or if you're using epidural pain medication. Another thing that you can do to change the vibe in the room, I think you say this word vibe all the time, I don't usually, but this is really what we're talking about, changing the tone and the feeling in the room, which can have a big impact on you. So another thing you can do is music, a simple Bluetooth speaker. I'm talking just like the little, most basic Bluetooth speaker. A lot of people just bring their cell phone and just try to play the music on their cell phone. I want to just do a step up with the speaker. It helps over all the other sounds of the hospital just a little bit louder. It doesn't have to be super loud. And then bring two different playlists. One playlist that's meant to be soothing and relaxing. Uh, you could even just put on some meditation music and that kind of thing, just to kind of get yourself in the flow. And then another playlist that's a little more upbeat. If there's a time where we really need to get you up and moving around and moving your hips around to help that baby find more optimal positions, sometimes it helps to change the music up. But I have a little story about this. 
I was at a group recently where the couple had put together a playlist ahead of time with a really special song for them that meant a lot to them in their marriage. And this baby was a rainbow baby, which means it was the baby after they had a loss, a miscarriage. And so this song was also a reference to that. So the baby was born and skin to skin, and then that song came on, and they both just started bawling. They both just started crying their eyes out. It meant so much to them. Music has such power and can really send a message. Another way that I use music sometimes is not say you're laboring in a tub and the nurses are out to chatting in the main room. Sometimes I'll move the speaker out into the main room while you're like laboring on the toilet or something to kind of remind the staff to quiet down. Because remember this is just like their third or fourth work day of the week, right? This is their workplace, but it's your room space. And they're not so to be disrespectful, they're just being human. And sometimes rather than having to be like shh I just put this really, really like stereotypical meditation music, <laughs> you know, like new agey stuff on really loud out in the main room. And honestly, it's really soothing for all of us. And it reminds everyone to keep their voices lowered and it changes the vibe. So a Bluetooth speaker can be really helpful. Another thing that some people love is to bring a spray bottle with the scent they like. So some both are really in essential oils, if that's you, by all means, you can make a blend, mix it with water and put it in a spray bottle. You can also just buy your favorite scent from a store if you like it. It can just be really nice and refreshing to be able to spray a scent, and then it doesn't smell like a hospital. Because <laughs> hospital smells are, you know, they are what they are. So that can be a tip. Some people also will just take a candle that means that they love that's burnt down. You can't light an actual candle in a hospital for fire hazards because there's oxygen and stuff. So, but you can take a candle that's been burned down, but you know the base can still have that smell and you could just hold it to your face. That could be soothing too. So those are some of the most basic things that you can do. The candles and the music, I do it every birth. That makes a huge difference. And your own clothes, I encourage that for every birth. The spray bottle, that's optional. And then here are some things that are also, can be optionally helpful. A visual. I was recently um, helping someone prepare the birth and she came up with the idea in collaboration with the birth class on her online birth class. She came up with this idea of a shower curtain. She loved to be in the woods and she just hated the idea of birthing in a hospital, but she didn't have a tire was pregnancy, didn't have choice. So she bought a shower curtain that was like in the woods and then taped it up with like painter's tape on the wall and she sent me pictures from her labor room of that shower curtain up on the wall. It's beautiful. And so she really tried to focus on going into that space as she worked through a really challenging labor experience that wasn't her first choice, but it was what she had to do to bring her baby here. So I loved that idea. So visually, you can also bring, I brought a painting to my first birth, like a little one. It's a postcard framed on my seven postcard. And it was something that my spouse, before married, we were actually young sweethearts, junior high, and he bought me a postcard and a piece of art that we had seen. And that meant so much to me, it's still framed in our home. So I brought that with me. Uh, for my second birth, it was Christmas time, and I love Christmas. So I brought a little Christmas tree, like this tall, from craft store, and it had LED battery operated lights. And I had that little thing flickering. I would lay down for a period of time and my spouse Justin brought a chair over and put the Christmas tree where I could see it while I was laying on my side with my leg over a peanut ball. And it was just it's a really strong, powerful memory for me. And so that's, sometimes that feels overwhelming to people to think of like a visual, but for me, uh, it's really powerful. For some people, it can be really powerful. So that's optional. Another thing that you can bring is a sign for the door. For some folks who do hypnobirthing, they tend to recommend that you put a sign on the door that says, you know, I'm, trying, I'm having a peaceful home birth, please keep your voice lowered when you're in the room or something like that. This is optional, it's something that you can do if you'd like, but for some people it helps to set the tone right on the door. It's just a piece of paper printed out and you can paint your stick, just to take it to the door. And then lastly, two really important things that aren't necessarily about setting the vibe, but I always want to mention is bring high nutritious, highly nutritious like fats and proteins. So anything, imagine you're going on like a backpacking trip where you're hiking to the top of a mountain. Bring the kind of foods that you would eat while you're hiking. So you can grab a bite and give you instant energy. Same with hydration. Definitely have a lot of hydration available. Some people bring electrolyte packets to place in their water to increase the hydration element of the water that they're drinking. But you, well, a really good practice is to take a sip of water after every contraction to ensure that you have a steady stream of hydration, which helps keep you hydrated and helps your labor progress. These are just two things to bring 
that just should be in your hospital room. So this is a little bit off topic, but I always like to mention it. When you're setting up your hospital room, you really want to have sex and maybe hydration. So that is it on how to set up your hospital room. Uh, these are just things that I find myself doing when I step into the room. And first thing I do is change the tone and get the vibe going and bring about a beautiful birth, whatever that means for you. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back with a new video every Thursday. See you next week.